uh, Simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule both work well uh, for small intervals. But as these intervals get larger, the uh, error becomes much larger. So one way to get around it is, for instance, uh, rather than going from, um, uh, for instance, if we are going from uh, some two points, any two points, say 0 to 4, and uh, this is an example I'm taking from burden Faris burden uh, let's take this integral 0 to 4 ex. Now ex is an explosive integral, as you know, the exponential values are quite large. And if I keep increasing this um, interval, it'll just get blown out of proportions and the error will get very large. So in this case, uh, if we use the Simpson's rule, for instance, uh, a Simpson's rule approximation to this uh, would be uh, from 0 to 4, and of course with h is equal to 2 in this case because 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. So this gives us uh, 2 over 3 into e to the 0 plus 4e2 plus e to the 4. Okay, and that approximately uh, turns out to be 56.76958. 76958. Now, actually, this is an easy integral to work out. The actual answer okay the actual answer is in fact uh, the exact I'm sorry the exact answer in fact is um, e4 minus e0 which is just equal to in fact 53.59815 59815 now if you can see this and this there's a big huge error the error is just not acceptable now one way to uh, overcome this is we know that integration is a linear process and we can take, we can split the interval 0 to 4 into a smaller interval. Uh, for instance, we can say the integral, uh, this integral is equal to the integral of ex from 0 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 4 of ex dx. Now if we apply uh, Simpson's rule to this, then that means from 0 to 2 means 2 divided by 2, so our interval becomes 1. So we'll have 1 third, so this one will be, this one will be 1 third of uh, e to the 0 plus 4e plus e squared, okay? And plus, then we'll have 2 to 4, again that will be 1 third as well. So that will be 1 third, but the values will of course be different this time, so you'll be doing e2, okay? Uh, e2 plus 4e3, okay, plus uh, e to the 4, okay, because your h, h in this case, h is uh, 1 in this case, okay, in both of these, it's 1 each. Now, uh, if we look at this, this actually turns out to be 53.86385, 86385. Now, that's interesting. That's very interesting if you see here 53.86 and this is 53.5981 now. It's getting uh, much closer. Now why should, why should we stop there? We can easily do another, which is instead of 0 to 2, we can go 0 to 1 ex dx plus 1 to 2 ex dx plus 2 to 3 uh, ex dx and plus 3 to 4 ex dx. Okay, so now... Uh, what we're doing is we're applying the Simpson's rule, or if you wish, the trapezoidal rule to each of these uh, four integrals, okay? And if we do that, basically, uh, we get uh, an even better approximation. So in this case, uh, 0 to 1 uh, would be divided by 2, of course, so your h will be a half. So your h will be a half in this case. And when we use that, in fact, um, this uh, will get uh, significantly, uh, of course, uh, better. Uh, and, you know, it'll, so approximately, when we calculate it, it turns out it's actually 53.61622. Now you can see this, in fact, is uh, getting really close now to the uh, integral. Now in this way, we can continue uh, to do this and actually look at the sum of the integrals. And, um, and, and split, in fact, the formula 
into as many pieces as we want. Now here I could do now zero to a half, then half to one, um, uh, one to one and a half, uh, one and a half to two, and so on and so on up to four. So I can split it even further. Is rise to the composite Simpson's rule. And basically what we're saying here, so the composite Simpson's rule turns out to be, in fact, we can, we can say um, fx dx, and if we say that um, our h is um, the b minus a over n, in fact, so we are breaking it up into n strips or n pieces, and we say that our xj is, in fact, a plus jh, all right, where h is as defined here, then as j goes to 0, 1, 2, and so on, we have the up to n, of course, and then we have the following approximation of the integral. It's basically going to be just h over 3, okay, into fa plus uh, twice of the summation from j equals 1 to n over 2 minus 1, okay, and of course fx to j, those are the even uh, values, and plus uh, four times, okay, j equals, in fact, one to n over two, and here we'll have f uh, x two uh, j minus one, okay, and the final piece, of course, here uh, would be uh, uh, plus f b. So that would be uh, actually the composite rule. Now, uh, this, uh, of course, this is a collection and you can derive this if you wish, but uh, I'm just giving it to you as a rule here. It's called the composite Simpson's rule. It's the rule that you would be quite familiar with. Um, um, if you, when you did it in calculus one, probably when the first time you would have seen a Simpson's rule, you would have done a FA plus two times the first, four times the next, two times two, four, two, four, two, four, kind of a, and then the last point. So here, the uh, even numbers are multiplied by two, and the odd values are multiplied, uh, odd subscripts are multiplied by four. Uh, so anyway, this gives us the composite uh, Simpson's rule. In a similar way, we can also have the composite, uh, the composite trapezoidal rule, and I'll do some examples in a second but let me just give you the rule first. So the composite trapezoidal rule, okay, in a similar way can be done as follows, a, b, f, x, d, x, where h is the same as before, uh, and of course, uh, x, j are the same as before. So that's equal to h over two, the first point, and now there is the, the, the it's all with the two multiplier, so we just have, we don't have to split between even and odd in this case, and that turns out to be uh, that basically plus um, FB okay and that gives us the composite um, uh, trapezoidal rule okay so that basically are the two uh, composite uh, rules and the lot in the motivation is as I've shown you earlier okay let's do some examples uh, so uh, before we look at the um, example for composite numerical integration one of the things we need to add on and look at is the error terms for the Simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule. So for the integral a to b f x dx, the Simpson's rule has error term as you see here, okay, and where h of course is b minus a, uh, h here in all these is b minus a over n. So one of the interesting things this error term allows us to do is to go with a user-defined accuracy. So if user wants 10 to the minus 5 accuracy, for instance, on a, using a Simpson's rule, using this formula, we can calculate what n, in fact, uh, and therefore what h will, uh, will enable that accuracy, in fact. So uh, we'll, we'll try to look at an example of this. So here, uh, let's try to solve this integral um, sine x from 0 to pi, and suppose that we want an accuracy of this 10 to the minus uh, 0 0.00002, uh, 2 to the 10 to the minus 5, and um, uh, what we want to find out is what, uh, this is the user-defined accuracy, so this is what we want, and this is, this might be given to you, for instance, in an exam as an example, this might be given to you in a, in a question, so you'd be told, 
um, how, what h or what n in fact would uh, would get a, would get us this kind of accuracy for instance using the trapezoidal rule so the first thing uh, we have to do of course is we note that uh, using the trapezoidal rule um, using the trapezoidal rule of course we have uh, b minus a was is going to be pi okay and that's uh, divided by 12 then we have the h which is going to be pi over n in fact and that's squared and we have the second derivative of um, sine x which is uh, sine x of course negative sine x we're going to take its absolute value so negative sine mu now we note here at this point that the largest value sine mu can be on 0 to pi is 1 so therefore uh, we can say easily here uh, that this is going to be pi cubed over 12 n squared in fact uh, okay now uh, this uh, on the other hand is supposed to be less than the error that uh, we want which is uh, which is this uh, one, two, three, four, two. okay so now we want our error to be less than this which implies this implies that n of course uh, has to be greater than in fact when you solve this turns out it's it's got to be greater than 359.44 so we'd say about you need n equals 360 for this kind of accuracy 360 so a greater than or equal to n of 360 will make this um, possible now uh, so let's uh, let's then try the same thing if we wanted to do the Simpson's rule so what does the Simpson's rule say and this will also give you a very good idea about how different how uh, accurate accuracy wise how different these two rules are uh, so if I try to do the same process but this time we'll be using of course uh, this error term here so in that case what will happen is again B minus A is pi and then we have divided by 180 and we have pi over n is the same h but it's raised to the power 4 this time and we have the fourth derivative uh, of uh, sine x, which is still sine. So it'll just be sine mu. So we're looking at the absolute value of sine mu over 0 to pi, which is going to be the same thing. So it's just going to be less than or equal to, in other words, pi to the power 5 over 180. And uh, Okay, anyway, so now when we solve, this implies that n should be greater than um, or equal to um sorry not greater than or equal to uh okay so n should be greater than uh, 17.07 approximately which means a great n greater than or equal to uh, 18 would achieve uh, the accuracy that we have now look at the difference 360 terms uh 300 n 360 is required uh for trapezoidal for the same accuracy and only 18 are required for um, the Simpson's rule now the second one is um, we can uh, I, I'm we, it's practically quite difficult to do um, that's why we can use a computer to do this but if we were to do that um, in other words the Simpson's rule so here would mean that we would have 0 to pi sine x dx and if we're using the Simpson's rule of course then uh, this of course is our approximation It'll um, remember uh, according to the formula we have basically going we are going to have b minus h uh, over uh, three so h over three and remember our h uh, we're going to use um, with the n equals eighteen so with n equals eighteen with n equals eighteen we have basically uh, our h is going to be pi over eighteen in fact okay now uh, pi over eighteen is then of course, uh, in the formula, of course, we have h divided by uh, 3. So this means we'll end up with pi over uh, 54. So we got pi over 54, and that is multiplied by. So um, when you use the formula, as you saw uh, earlier, uh, we end up with this. So as you'll see, you have uh, twice. Um, uh, now you'll see the endpoints are missing, of course, here, because sine 0 is 0, and sine pi is also uh, zero in fact so that's why I've not written them down here so what you'll have is the 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 two multiplies the the even terms um, uh, the odd terms uh, even terms and and of course a four multiplies the uh, the odd terms 
So um, basically, uh, that's uh, what we uh, end up with. Anyway, you can see the accuracy there. The actual answer is two, in fact, and you can see that that is, in fact, of the desired uh, uh, accuracy. So just as an added extra here, I've done the same, here's the same problem, but with n equals 18, and we can do the trapezoidal, uh, composite trapezoidal rule here, and it turns out that that's equal to 1.9949205. And you can see the accuracy difference between the two. And of course, the trapezoidal with 18 terms is much weaker. Uh, it's approximately the accuracy about uh, 10 to the minus 3 or so. Um, but of course, we our initial uh, uh, user accuracy demand was 10 to the minus 5. So, uh, and that is achieved by uh, the Simpson's rule. So it just shows, this just to show you how the trapezoidal works, the composite, and also how we can, uh, it is in fact giving us the um, weaker accuracy here. Okay, so hopefully that uh, it should be sufficient for you to see how the composite trapezoidal and Simpson's rules are in fact used.